We're at Tweed Heads on the New South Wales-Queensland border for the Australian Indoor Championship on Super Series Bowls. Great to have you along. It's the second match we're showing you. It's the second of the women's semi-finals. One of these players will join Karen Murphy in the title decider. Well, it'll be either 17-year-old Kelsey Cottrell from Noosa Heads in Queensland or 23-year-old Claire Duke from Moama and the 2004 champion here. Well, Ian Schubach, we've had one great semi already. Who do you like in this one? Kelsey Cottrell's playing pretty good, but this is a replay of the Queensland Open singles final. Claire Duke, she had her opportunities to win that match. Kelsey prevailed. Not sure, Steve, really. What a treat for our viewers. An 18-year-old and a 23-year-old, the future of Australian bowls right here. Yes, and you mentioned Karen Murphy already into the final. So against Maria Rigby, they were the two experienced players in Australia. Today, we've got two of the youngest stars in the country. They've come in once again in great numbers to the Tweed Heads Club and I think much expected of this match between Kelsey Cottrell and Claire Duke. Val Newnham, you'll hear her English accent from time to time across the match. And uh, Shuey, I guess you're getting to know Kelsey better and better now that you're up at Noosa as well and she's got a, a wealth of talent. Yes, Steve, uh, prodigious talent. Just turned 17 years of age, Kelsey Cottrell. One of the veterans at 23. <laughs> Former winner. See Claire Duke quite a bit up at Noosa Heads as well. Her uh, father lives up at Noosa. Claire goes up there quite often to see her dad and get on the terrific greens. Lorraine Murray, local player here, a very good win in the tie break. Lights went out halfway through that match and controversial circumstances. Kelsey were to go on and represent at the World Championship, she'd be one of the youngest there. Claire defeated Sharon Renshaw, also in a tie break. She felt she was a little lucky to win her match against uh, Katrina Giles, but uh, otherwise she's been playing solidly here. Yeah, Katrina Wright. Katrina Wright, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Katrina from the Cabramatta Club, it was, that was a fantastic match. Claire Duke defeated Katrina. She lost the first set, 2-13, 8-7, scrambled home in the second, 2-1 in the tie break. Great come from behind victory from Claire Duke over Katrina Wright. Penny Landher from South Australia in the first round, 10-4, 15-1. She's in good form, Claire Duke. Kelsey's bowl out the side there, Val. Is that Jack High, please? This one here? Yes, please. No, it's one bowl in front. Thank you. Cut across. Tough decision now for Kelsey. There's two back bowls there on the bottom left. Two choices here. Does she cover the back or does she try to draw a third shot? It's not going to be a third shot. It's Claire could ill afford to clip her only bowl away from the head. Well, it could be a drive. It's a drive. Oh. She's got one of the best in the women's game, Shuey. But not this time. 
And that'll be two to Kelsey Cottrell in the first end of this second semi-final. Perhaps she's got a bad drive out of the way early. Claire Duke. <laughs> out there are uh, uh, two shots to Kelsey Cottrell, so she's off and running. Kelsey Cottrell, very upright stance on the mat. Body guide goes down and then forward, long forward stride. Good forward momentum. Excellent technique, Kelsey Cottrell. All the Australian players would be just sitting back enjoying this matchup. There'd be no favourite amongst the Australian squad. They're both well liked, these two players. Very large size four. Claire, most of the girls use threes, but Claire's a size four bowl. Just expect a few wayward bowls in uh, the first two or three ends. There's a massive crowd in for the semi-final. Eager anticipation after these two players met in the final of the Queensland Open. Super Bowl coming in from Cottrell Toucher. Must be some spectators here at Tweed Heads going, how are they so good, so young? Well, they took it up early, I guess, as part of it. Kelsey started at just 12 years of age. Oh, this is an excellent conversion shot from Claire. <laughs> Terrific result for Claire Duke. Uh, Claire's back bowl, how far past is that, thanks? About eight inches. Through. Top. Well, Val Newnham held up one banana coloured or gold coloured lollipop. So looks like the bowl at three o'clock must be the shot. Definitely is now. I guess when you think about how young these players are, Shui, it's part of the changing profile of the sport in that not only are the, well, have we got young players in the Australian squads now, but compared to a generation ago, the players are being drawn to the sport at a, at a much earlier age. Oh, that's right, Steve. And their, their decision-making, I think the girls uh, have improved so much, their decision-making, their tactical knowledge. They've got all the shots. They know when to attack, when to defend. And they're very fit. I mean, both these girls, um, part of their benchmark and fitness-wise, because of their age, they have to run, I think, 2,400 metres in 12 minutes. That's um, six laps of an oval in 12 minutes. That's moving. Mm. So they're pretty fit. it to drop and instead it finds the port begs the question I suppose surely for some people about well if you're just bowling and walking to the other end why do you need to be physically fit well she's unlucky not to get the feather there and sit on that bowl for two well it's the mental concentration Steve and um, without sounding sexist at all it's a known fact that uh, sports psychologists will tell you that the girls have to feel good to play good Guys, on the other hand, they have to play good to feel great. And these girls, they feel pretty good about themselves. They train hard. And long campaigns like the World Championships, Commonwealth Games. Oh, Claire looking for the shot. Bowles got it clean. Excellent conversion from Claire Duke. So just a smile there uh, for Claire Duke after 
Good contact. Three. And she concedes three. It was a tight three, but a good three for Claire Duke. And she suddenly takes the lead. So shots are plenty in the first couple of ends here of the second semi-final. It's Claire Duke, 3-2. Two thousand and three was the first year of the women's Australian indoor, and a Queenslander won it. Di Cunnington, she's here today. I said, "Who do you think will win it, Di?" She, oh, she feels like everybody. It's really tough to call, but her personal choice was that uh, Kelsey would get up. Di Cunnington is in a Queensland selector now has played for Australia, and you mentioned won this event. And uh, Claire being a Victorian representative. Oh, I don't think there was any bias there. She had full <laughs> of praise for them both. Claire just needs to tighten up with the opening bowl. It's costing her dearly at the moment. She's lucky, you mentioned Steve, she, she's lucky to be still in this first set after just in danger of dropping a four on the previous end. Good thing if you screw up your face, unless your opponent can't see your expression. <laughs> I don't know why Kelsey was worried about. Yeah. It's better than waving your arm or shaking your head. Yeah, it finished well. Good players usually, but not always, shall we? Know when they've delivered a good or a bad <laughs> bowl. Yeah, I think Kelsey was worried it was, might have sat right alongside the jack. See the angle of that bowl turning really sharply. Kelsey's bowl a slightly narrower bias. Beautiful release on the bowl. Good decision from Claire. She just missed the line completely on the forehand with her previous. Decided to switch to the backhand. Been overweight a lot on the draw shots. And is again another two at the moment for Cottrell here in the fifth end. She's had three twos already for a 6-3 lead. And Claire Duke just can't quite get into this first set. She did pick up a three in the second end, but has only won one of the four ends. She's holding a couple of shots. Um, there's problems out here on the bottom right around this area, Steve. I, I think she might switch to the backhand and get the best backward in on the right-hand side of the line as we're looking from behind the head. not just about drawing near the jack it's covering the danger preempting what your opponent may play where the jack may finish up you happy with that split the three bowls what why she covered that she's thinking claire will play backhand conversion weight with a meter or two and if claire sliced the jack she would have scored three shots now kelsey has covered the slice and the spot if, the, if Claire decides to drive for the two bowls. I think this time it's worth a drive again. Go for the jack or the hits the front bowl, could take out the other one. She's been driving a lot, but not too accurate. Tough shot. Conversion shot forehand toward the club will nearly always hang wide with weight. You called it, Chewy. And a fourth double dropped by Claire Duke. Kelsey Cottrell very much in control of this first set now at 8-3.
Claire Duke, very upright stance. Beautiful, fluent backswing follow through. Has been coached by Jeff Cameron from Moama. Very good technique, Claire Duke. A far shot lead to 17 year old Kelsey Cottrell. Interesting tactic, Steve. Um, Kelsey's taking the mat when she's winning these ends, rolling her preferred length. This one's a little bit longer than the rest. It's about a 31 metre length. And she really is dictating terms. Whereas Claire, I spoke to Claire just before this semi final, and Claire's tactic initially was to give the mat away and play last. So Claire's playing last, but trailing by five shots. So effective right there. Claire, not as one would hope for. Just been overweight. It's the adrenaline pumping. Just adding on a little. Sharon Renshaw uh, lost in the quarterfinal to uh, Claire Duke. Australian squad player Sharon Renshaw from the St John's Park Club in Sydney. Ah, Claire Duke arrives. <laughs> brings a smile to the face of relief almost. Cameron Curtis beside Sharon and behind there is... Uh, Karen Murphy, who's into the final and assessing the form of the opponents, as you would. She already knows how they play. I want to ask you, Shui, when uh, the selectors choose a national side to go away to, say, World Championships next year in New Zealand, what kind of instructions they might give the team about um, team bonding or supporting each other? Well, that's nothing to do with the selection. That's to do with the high-performance team and the coaching of the squad. And I um, have a couple of sports psychologists, Paul Penner, who works with the Australian swimmers. And um, we, um, we do a lot of bonding uh, with a chap called Bruce Davis, who used to play for the, uh, the South Melbourne and now the Sydney Swans. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. A backhand draw shot from Claire Duke switches to the forehand and draws a second. At long last, Claire Duke has found her drawing rhythm. Yes, and Bruce uh, Davis, part of the brief of uh, Bowls Australia's high performance team when it uh, was introduced, Steve, was to change the culture of elite level bowls in Australia and become the world's best practice in high performance. And uh, Bruce Davis was brought in to to facilitate a cultural change and uh, he encouraged the players to take ownership of the the values uh, that the players um, they really are a family the australian squad it's there's such a target when they go out against every other non-squad player everyone wants to beat an australian representative and uh, and i think that's very good character building for the australian players to stick together support one another Pressure on Kelsey and she's dropping short. So Claire Duke, she's not done with yet in this opening set. So she's holding two, looking for a third. And just to finish on that, Steve, years ago that the Australian men and the Australian women, they didn't mix at all. Um, Cameron Curtis has insisted that the Australian women train with the men. It's just one team. They don't have separate training camps and there's Coach Curtis. And that's been the main reason for this massive rise in form of the Australian girls. They're training with the likes of Kelvin Kirko and Nathan Rice and Mark Casey and the, some of the real stars in World Bowls and, and really have improved dramatically, the girls. Claire just not arriving. <coughs> but it's an important pick up for Claire Duke to get back into this Good first set. Multiple scores all the way. High scoring first set, two for Claire Duke, and she trails by three after six ends. Uh, 
17 year old is leading the 23 year old. When we think, Shui, that there's normally about one and a half shots per end, <laughs> high scoring affair. Yes, not one single in the match. Um, we expect the second set, Steve, to be a lot tighter. <coughs> Claire was probably, she's still just alive. She could escape with a tie. I don't think Claire can possibly win the set. She needs five shots on two ends. She's already scored a three and a two, and that's what she needs. But I don't think Claire will be Darlene Jeffrey, a former Australian representative. Uh, I don't think Claire would be too worried. She has won this Australian indoor before. She knows what it takes. Kelsey Cottrell though, Steve, she, <laughs> you just mentioned, she's peppering the jack, bowl after bowl. I really think that um, the tactic that Claire needs to think about now and then apply would be to take control of the match. You've got to win the end first and play maximum distance. Most of the ends have been over 26 to 30 metres. We haven't had a 33 metre length yet. Cottrell was a silver medalist earlier this year in triples and fours in the Asia Pacific Championships. Claire missed out on that team, but then went to New Zealand in the Trans Tasman series and skipped the Australian triple side for three successive victories with Noi Tucker up front and uh, Sharon Renshaw playing second. So in the last couple of years, Claire Duke has been repositioned as a back end player, as a skip even though the fact that she has fine singles form as well. Trailer Jack for a couple. Missed it. That's kind of summed up her first set. That's okay, Steve. One's no good for Claire. She went for the trail of a bare Jack. That was the right shot to play. Well, the beauty of sets play, as uh, Claire Duke will no doubt be telling herself, is that she can put this one behind her if she indeed loses it. I think Kel Kelsey will cover this time, Steve. I think she'll play backhand. She'll just play backhand, overdraw weight, try to punch her bowl past the jack or just miss on the high side or the wide side of the head. I think she'll be looking and making contact with her bowl there at uh, two o'clock from the jack or finding the gap and sneaking through push it and sneaking through. Oh, covered everything. <laughs> She's holding a couple. She's looking confident. Kelsey Cottrell walking up and down the rink uh, with a full stride. Shoulders back. Claire is tactically astute. She knows that one shot really is not going to be enough. She's not going to try to rest the bowl for one. She's going to try to pick up the bear jack with three or four feet of weight, metre and a half, trail the jack through, potentially three shots. It's an extremely difficult shot to play. She's going to try to drive the jack into the ditch. That would still be worth a couple. Oh, she's got the jack. What a great drive. So she scored a couple of shots at least. Well jack done. is off the rear. Yeah. So the jack will be re-spotted, and let's see uh, how many Claire Duke can pick up here. Driving for the bare jack, and got it clean. What a great drive. I think it might be the cross. On the cross, Phil. Oh. The cross? Yeah. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Well, there was a dot there, and Val was just... Uh, Sorry, I told where it really goes. Two to Claire Duke. Now that has uh, given her just a, an outside chance of squaring this first set. She needs three in the last end. Well done, Claire. Claire Duke's decided uh, she still better give the mat. 
to Kelsey Cottrell as she chases three shots in the last end to halve the first. No head off in pressure though from Kelsey Cottrell. Well, Kelsey has not lost one end in the match, Steve, in this direction. Wasn't quite what was needed for Claire Duke to have a chance here, but fair way to go in this end. Can she get around that short bowl? Yes, she kind of can. <laughs> I had it going a bit further than that, Chewy. That's a great attempt. Most players would have switched to the backhand there, Steve, but Kelsey backed herself to slide around the Claire Duke bowl. Claire may play the conversion shot early on this end. She's fully aware she needs three, so and she won't be dropping short. What's she got? It's okay, she's got second and third. That's a good position for Claire. Three shots are on. How about sure it's Claire's last, thanks? Her last bowl? Yeah. But seven inches? Tuck. And uh, have I got third shot? Third shot? Yes, thanks. No. Third shot is this one. Tuck. Well, I'm surprised that Kelsey now is switching to her backhand. She knows the forehand so well. I thought she perhaps would have been able to come through the middle of Claire's two bowls and perhaps trail the jack and really secure this set. Different line, a little bit slower and wider on the backhand. Now Claire Duke's got an opportunity here. It's a tough conversion shot, but arrived to the shot bowl through the gap with about... She's just looking off to the monitor at that end, at the mat end, and this is the overhead shot she can see. So it gives the players an idea. The big danger here for Claire, too heavy and probably too wide. It will not turn on the forehand if she's overweight. She's done it again. She's made that mistake before. Yeah, well, that weight was no good because she couldn't have got to the shot bowl without moving the jack with that weight. So. And it's splashed as well in the ditch. Kim Littlejohn, Cameron Curtis, Sharon Renshaw, talking it all through. You can <laughs> never have too many tactical discussions, <laughs> shall we? Karen Murphy saying, well, Claire can still make the three. She can come off the blue bowl onto the shot bowl, which is exactly the shot that Claire will be visualising. I think Joey, as she's affectionately named, will try to take the shot away through the gap. I think she'll go searching with just 60 centimetres of weight with a tightish line, trail the jack for the set. Again, it's just hanging a little out there. So Claire Duke has still got the opportunity. <laughs> and Kelsey knows that she was wide. Three shots needed by Claire Duke. How can she get them? The shot is on, Steve, but she must not be too wide. She, what she needs to do, Steve, is, is perhaps come off the inside of that with a, with a metre of running and then come across and sit that bowl solid, push it twice. She'll be holding three shots. She gone too wide again. Just can't quite get the line right. Needs something to go well here and uh, makes no contact whatsoever. So that's one 
to Kelsey Cottrell and uh, she takes the first set reasonably comfortably in the end by four shots and deserves to having won uh, six ends to three. She wins it 11-7 against Claire Duke. And Quentin Hull will be stepping in to take up the commentary with Shuey in the second set. Cottrell took the first set and uh, controls the second through three ends. The youngster from Noosa, the third seed here, playing Claire Duke, the second seed. And again, Cottrell impeccable, straight up. but certainly made the conversion a shot a lot easier, broadened the target. Born in New Zealand, but, uh, well, Joey gives away her uh, great allegiance to Australia, but uh, interestingly, she still supports the All Blacks. I might have to have a discussion about that around rug Rugby World Cup time. <laughs> See if we can uh, we can change things. <laughs> Again, Duke close, but not her day. Uh, just needed an ounce more weight to turn the Cottrell Bowl out. It's the only the second bowl of the match for Kelsey on the backhand in this direction. She's just marginally short with the first. And excellent correction with the second. Impeccable line and length. You just have these days when uh, it's a wonderful feeling when you've just almost got the jack on a string. You can just keep slotting them in. And sooner or later, you know, your opponent is going to crack. Claire Duke. Two down. Again, close. Oh, and a bit of help this time. Duke has the shot. Let's see the blue. Well, she probably <laughs> thought she was due this turn of fate because she'd bowled uh, a couple of nice <laughs> bowls earlier in the end. Aussie girls <laughs> contemplating and, well, Joey's playing plenty of weight. Big weight. She'll hit something. And needed it solid as uh, you heard the call of fat. That's when they wanted to hit it right in the middle. But it just got the angled ricochet. There it is. Just leaning to the left as she saw it at the last moment. As it is, she's level in the second set. I don't think Claire can possibly add a second shot on the backhand. No, it's just one. So a bit of a pattern developing in this uh, second set. Cottrell first end two, Duke second end two, Cottrell third end one, Duke fourth end one. Three, three after four. Get the feeling that uh, Claire Duke has worked her way into the second set and is starting to settle. Cottrell the first, 11 to 7, but here it's 3 all through 4. The 
winner to meet Karen Murphy in the Australian Indoor Final for 2007. Very hard to separate the two players at the moment in the, that final of um, the Queensland Open, which is on an outdoor green at Cleveland in Brisbane. It uh, took both these players four ends of the tiebreaker. They're all square after three ends of the tiebreaker. Had to play a fourth. Claire's <laughs> fighting back. But absolutely uh, contrasting conditions. Sublime <laughs> indoor carpet here at Tweed Heads at uh, Cleveland at the Queensland Open. They're almost blown off the rink. But uh, I suppose, Shui, that uh, shows one thing about these two players. Uh, the Queensland Open, a Grand Prix event, uh, part of the uh, elite circuit for Bowls Australia. Both players able to find good play there on the outdoor greens and they've able to, uh, been able to transfer that indoors. Shows they've got all the skills and adaptability. Yeah, this is more about drawing a skill on the indoor surface, whereas on the outdoor, it's a lot about psychological skill. Just not getting too frustrated. Just being able to tough out the conditions. Horrendous conditions at Cleveland. And now I've got ideal conditions indoors. And I wouldn't want to be outside today either. It's windy and wet outside. Really just knuckled down time now. They're just realising that uh, if Cottrell has the best of the next two ends, well, you get the feeling she'll win the day, but uh, should Duke take the next couple, it'll be a tie break. Two down at the moment, Claire. Kelsey won to play. This is a big shot for Claire. She has been hanging wide on this backhand. Hasn't minimised the count. As I say, she was just a little bit out there to the right. Everything else was pretty much perfect. <laughs> Embarrassed smile from Kelsey. She knows she's put it out wide as well. Pressure starting to tell. Even so. Cottrell can afford to uh, laugh it off, so to speak, because she picks up a very handy two. She won the first set and now leads the second five ends into it by five to three. Get the feeling, Shuey, that uh, Duke needs to win this end. Absolutely, Quentin, and I, I get the feeling that unless Claire Duke goes at least, 30, at least one attempt at the 33-metre range, ditch to ditch, She's not going to win this semi-final. Kelsey's just too rock solid over these medium three-quarter lengths. Claire's had two or three attempts with the mat up playing short. And you really a tip for all our keen bowling viewers that if you, go, if you are going to lose a match, make sure at least you've tried every possible tactic and endeavour to fight back into the, the game. And at the moment, Claire hasn't played one maximum length the only time the jack was 33 meters away from the mat was when claire duke killed the end it was re-spotted on the tee and that was the end when claire duke nailed two shots just from cottrell's perspective she'd be looking well if i can win this end minimum one that would make me six three and then there's three ends left even if i drop singles draw in the second set doesn't worry me I've won the first, thank you very much, but... Coach you... Curtis, um, sorry, Quentin, Coach Curtis has a very interesting philosophy on sets play. He says that if you score nine shots yourself, you'll generally win the set. If you can keep your opponent to less than six shots over nine ends, you'll also generally win the set. So 
So at the moment, Kelsey Cottrell, she's on the five shots and holding two. And the next two bowls for Claire Duke, probably the most important for her if she's going to win this semi-final. She must retrieve this three-shot deficit. <laughs> two down on the scoreboard, three down on the head. And two to play. Years ago, Claire Duke would never have made this shot, but she is quite tough now, under pressure. Oh, yes. 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 Well called, Shuey. Lindsay Armitage, Karen Murphy. They can appreciate what type of, uh, well, intestinal fortitude it would, was required to play that shot, staring down the barrel of the uh, ever-slipping match situation and how one bowl can quickly turn the attention to another player. A concerned look from Quantrill, what's she thinking of? Well, she's thinking drive. Um, I think she's thinking, Quinn, a backhand drive and just rip Claire's bowl clean out. It's probably safer to just stay on the draw because Claire Duke has still got one to play. Kelsey can afford to lose one. No, she's playing controlled weight. Very close. Miss the Jack. Miss it. Miss it. Up. Excellent. Oh, wow. What a wonderful shot. Called to miss the Jack. She's holding four shots. Kelsey Cottrell. Such extreme skill. Under pressure, we were saying that how one bowl can change things. A moment ago, she was under pressure because Duke had played a beauty. And now, Cottrell says, back to you, Claire. You're down four. What can you do? Biggest shot of the match for Claire Duke. If you don't do something here, the final berth is mine. Oh, this is an outstanding display. I don't think she's going to get lucky, but even so, there's a bold attempt. It does minimise. From four down to two down. Probably just overcooked it a little. But even so, what an outstanding end of bowls. Kelsey Cottrell, seven to three. Possible three ends remaining in the second set. But uh, as it stands, we might not need them. Kelsey Cottrell, four ahead. And she won the first set, 11 to seven. 17-year-old from the Sunshine Coast looking to make yet another big stride in her burgeoning career. Tweed heads royalty right there, Steve Glasson, a nine-time Australian indoor champion. Not a part of the field this year, but looking on. No doubt enjoying this display. Close again from Duke. Yes, he owned this rink for almost a decade. has some room. Kelsey Cottrell just uh, could have slammed the door shut on the semi-final of that second bowl, but she's left Claire with uh, half to three quarters of a metre, but the adrenaline's pumping. Claire's overweight. Well, as it is, Duke needs five shots in three ends. That's if uh, she doesn't... Well, that was before this end started, so... Now halfway through it, two bowls delivered each. She's probably further away. Yes, Claire's going to have to win the last three ends, one would think, Coynan, if she's going to win this match. 
Well, Kelsey's left some, it's probably Kelsey's worst end of the match. I think she's thinking of the victory speech. There's a couple of catches there. Would Duke be even thinking of pushing it through? Well, not from that uh, I'm surprised angle. Claire hasn't played more draw shots on the forehand. There's an open forehand draw. If she was a little bit overweight, could trail the jack for three. And she's, looks like she's drawn the shot, Claire Duke. Close. Definitely one blue. Okay, Shuey. <laughs> What's Val <laughs> Newnham? She's calling a measure. One blue. Go with the circles? Definitely go with the circles. I've never been wrong. The, circles. <laughs> <laughs> the way Kelsey Cottrell's played in this match, you'd, you'd almost expect her to draw this shot. It's her last bowl of the seventh end. Claire will have the fingers crossed. Kelsey misses. Oh, worried look. I think she's thinking of crashing. That's what she's worried about. Sweeps narrow. She's almost drawn the shot underneath. She's come in the back door. She's drawn the she shot. She has. Well. And it well, sort of provides a blocker too. If there was any thought of a forehand to uh, the blue catching brigade from Duke. So she'll probably just have to get tough and try and draw one. Just a must make bowl this for Claire Duke. She's, I think she's maybe thinking about coming underneath, resting on Kelsey's bowl. Not going to like this result. If she doesn't get around, oh, she's got around it. Yes. Found a feather on the way past, but it's still the result that uh, Duke needed, and she's going to give the mat away. Keeps her alive, but for how long? Cottrell seven to four, two ends possibly left in the second set. The scenario this for Kelsey Cottrell. She wins the end, she wins the semi final, she is into the final against her. Australian teammate, good mate, and uh, I'd suggest great uh, idol as well, Karen Murphy. That's where I wanted the jack. <laughs> and perhaps she knows it. <laughs> yeah, she's just having trouble closing out the match. Kelsey, just, oh, lack of experience. Claire Duke, I don't think even if she scores one Quentin on this end, it, it will be enough. I think she needs to be within one shot of... One shot of Kelsey going into the last end. And well, may Karen Murphy just uh, chew on her gum in the stands. Just uh, taking it in. A bit of homework before the final. Kelsey has not had one bad end. She's rarely had two bad bowls in a row. She's been able to correct end after end. Well, it looks more likely now, and what a final it would be with Murphy, one of the most decorated uh, bowlers in Australia, yet she hasn't won this title. Of course, Cottrell on an absolute warpath at the moment. Queensland Open champion, just 17 years of age. How dare she come and even challenge Karen Murphy for what should be rightly hers after so long. <laughs> yes, well, Kelsey, Kelsey, as you mentioned, she won the last Grand Prix event, the singles, that... Queensland Open. She also won the Black Douglas uh, Invitational Singles at South Tweed Heads. She had a fantastic year, Kelsey Cottrell. Queensland State Triples Championship, the World Team Cup win. And she is effectively now holding the match. And Claire Duke has just <coughs> got two bullets left in the gun. Just trying to calm the nerves to play a ball burster here. Looking to sit the shot bowl clean out for three.
close. She's been missing no. a little bit wide on the forehand and just slightly narrow that time on the backhand. Claire Duke has second shot, and she does still have third shot. Still the opportunity. Well, the moment is now. If this comes <coughs> off to perfection, we'll be tied. Backhand conversion. Quinn looking to swing around the front bowl, rest the shot bowl out and stay for three shots. If she does it, we're level at seven. If she doesn't... The game is over. Oh, well, the game is still alive. She's got the shot, Claire Duke. Only one, I think, but I reckon she's <laughs> sliced it for a couple here. It's we're going to have to uh, get them. Uh, I reckon midday might have it <laughs> there instead of uh, ten o'clock. I think it's just the one, but how about uh, the tape to decide it? Oh, that, yeah, that gives us a bit better indication. Just one, but enough to force us to a ninth end. And it's been that kind of day for Claire Duke, so close on so many occasions, yet uh, luck not favouring her. Control leads by two. Jenny Harrigan from Kandanga in Queensland, Australian selector, former Australian rep, silver medalist in world championships. Cottrell on the mat, knowing that uh, she can concede one, she can concede two. Any more, and uh, they'll play a tie break. But if she wins the end, or concedes less than three, the semi-final is hers. Story of the match, Claire has just missed wide on the backhand. That's going to make it very tough. Just a muted applause to start, but and the realisation that that is a pretty important bowl from Cottrell. <laughs> Claire's not giving up. <laughs> and the front touch up. And here's the uh, the reason, Chewy, why a couple of ends ago we speak about the the scoreboard scenario. Cottrell's content to be down here and just to, to slot it in because she knows, having won the first set, she only has to ensure she doesn't make a big mistake here. Yeah, tie's good enough. She can afford to drop two, tie the second set, advance to the final. Not much room for Claire to add a second. The way she's playing, she get the outside edge of this bowl and fall out. So now... Uh, That's OK. The two um, Cottrell bowls, Quentin, sorry, uh, to close by, the split is on. The, you, you split the two bowls. So she could actually... She'd be already thinking, wait. And this is not a bad head. She can sit that bowl, come off, and just push that out to the side as well. It's not a bad shot, this, for Claire. 
to make the three. So Joey needs to either plug the gap or just draw the shot. It's not quite over yet. It's not an easy shot for Claire Duke, but it is certainly a makeable shot. Unless Kelsey Cottrell could slot another bowl in there. Well, maybe some luck wow. for Duke, because if that had have stopped there, as you said, Shuey, the shot's not on. And now Duke looks at the angles to see <laughs> if she can pull it off. Well, the thing is, Shuey, if she takes out six o'clock and can stay, that'll be three. Well, she may drive if she's got... Um, if her wing bowl out there on the right beats the bottom yellow bowl, she may drive for the two bowls for three. Or play firm weight. This is a good shot for Claire. Got a couple of chances here. Just punch one out of the way and stay. I'll look for both. Wrong contact, wrong bowl. Wrong bowl and in a sense, that's been the day for Duke. She uh, hasn't been too far away, but uh, just not good enough today for Kelsey Cottrell. The youngster will take on Karen Murphy in the final. Straight sets for Cottrell, 11-7, 7-6. Well, Kelsey holds the distinction of now being the youngest finalist at uh, the Australian Indoor. That was some of your best bowls, surely, Kels? I was really happy the way I played in that game. I sort of coming into that game, I'd had three sort of scratchy games and just, you know, got away with the wins and um, just, yeah, really happy to have a good game. And Claire's such a good competitor. I knew I had to come out and play well. Your draw shots were, were just right out of the top draw. I was really happy with my first two bowls. Like I knew that you know, I had to nail my first two in and sort of hope that you know, Claire's got such a good drive and a conversion. I just had to hope that you know, she, today wasn't her day with her, with her drives. And, and luckily, you know, I was able to hold on to a couple of numbers early and that, you know, it was probably the difference. Midway through the second set, you're sitting on a handy lead. You had to defend from there on in because she did make a good run at you. Yeah, definitely. I knew I was drawing well, so I just knew, you know, you know, get three or four balls in the head or, you know, and make sure I have backward and, and think just little things like that and just make sure I get a second shot. So, you know, I knew she was going to sort of come back at me. It was just a matter of holding her off. Now, you've got to play someone who's probably a bit of an idol of yours in the final. How are you head-to-head uh, -head with Karen? Um, she got me last week, actually, in the Golden Nugget. So, you know, I need to get some revenge. But, um, you know, yeah, I just want to go out and have another good game. You know, if I could play like that, you know, I'd, I'd, and I could give her a run. Um, she's playing really well at the moment. So, you know, we'll see what happens. All the best in the final. Thank you. Make sure you're with us for our next program from the Australian Indoor. It's the women's final between Karen Murphy and Kelsey Cottrell. We hope you can join us then. Goodbye for now.